Hello, I'm Dr. Rekha Sharma from the School of Communication Studies at Kent State University. Welcome to my lightning talk, Improving Public Discourse Through Open Education Resources. I recently participated in the OhioLink OER Course Redesign Grant Program, and I got to work with some very knowledgeable librarians to identify several options for open or library licensed content to integrate into one of the classes I teach. The inclusion of OER served to underscore a lot of the lessons of the course itself, so I wanted to share some of the insights and benefits that arose from raising awareness of OERs for faculty members like me, for my students, and maybe even for society in the long term. Specifically, I want to talk about how incorporating OERs can foster student engagement as well as long-term civic engagement. So in this lightning talk, I will address the awareness and use of OERs as important components of information and media literacy skills that empower students to engage in critical thinking, advocacy, and public participation in online and offline contexts. I hope this presentation will encourage educators like you to use OERs to prepare students for navigating the political environment of the present and future. This involves helping them to understand their rights and responsibilities as content creators, consumers, and disseminators dealing with technological innovations and global systems. I'll use one of my own communication courses that's grounded in rhetoric as an example, but this presentation will also cover multidisciplinary principles regarding how OERs may not only serve the diverse needs of learners, but also how they may enlarge the diversity of perspectives represented and considered in scholarship and society. Before I get into how OERs enhanced my students' learning experiences, let me tell you what I hope you'll learn from this lightning talk and our asynchronous discussions together. First, I intend for you to learn how to communicate transparently about the possible reasons for including OERs into course materials. This can foster awareness of how knowledge is understood and co-constructed within a discipline and in society. Second, I intend for you to learn about how attributing sources clearly can contribute to awareness of OERs within an increasingly complex framework of intellectual property, copyright, and content creation. My third intention is to help you to learn to evaluate OERs more purposefully and effectively. In the case of my course, evaluating relevant OERs involved a lot of the same review, criticism, and argumentation processes I was teaching my students as they learned about communication and rhetoric. But more widely, learning to evaluate OERs can promote intellectual diversity and allow us to build inclusive learning environments in and beyond the classroom. I mentioned earlier that I framed my lightning talk in terms of improving public discourse through OERs. The initial reason for my title has to do with a course map I redesigned for my class, Criticism of Public Discourse. This class centers on the critical examination of public speeches on a variety of historic and contemporary matters of social controversy. Students learn about rhetorical criticism as they evaluate public communication and get a better understanding of the role of speech making in free societies, and in not so free societies for that matter. At its core, the class is concerned with the formation of judgment and enlightened choice. As such, it satisfies one of the university's core requirements. The Kent core overall is intended to broaden intellectual perspectives, foster ethical and humanitarian values, and prepare students for responsible citizenship and productive careers. The course also satisfies a university diversity requirement because it exposes students to different perspectives, paying particular attention to minority voices and views. Students learn about history, culture, and the contributions of communicators representing an array of ages, national origins, races, ethnicities, religions, political or ideological leanings, sexual orientations, genders, physical and neurodevelopmental abilities, and social classes. Students examine the rhetorical responses to conflicts, problems, and issues that may arise from differences and learn about how to deal constructively with them. The need to think critically, advocate responsibly, resolve conflicts peacefully, and engage with others genuinely transcends a single course, though. So while integrating OERs reinforces the content of the particular class I teach, there are multidisciplinary principles to be learned and applied to other courses and educational contexts, too. 
To provide some context for the OER course mapping I conducted for criticism of public discourse, I should mention that I was already working with our university librarians to make the readings comprehensive, useful, affordable, and accessible. The required readings for the course consist primarily of speeches curated from scholarly journals, published anthologies, and online compilations. These were made available for free and immediate access to students through our library's course reserves. In addition to the required readings, I also recommended a conventional textbook to supplement some of the lecture material on basic rhetorical theories and concepts. While this textbook was a really good one, I was notified that the book would soon be out of print. This presented an opportunity to begin investigating OERs that could serve as a suitable substitute. Working with librarians, I identified and reviewed around eight different texts. These dealt with principles and concepts related to argumentation and public speaking, touching on rhetoric, critical thinking, ethics, writing, and research. Ultimately, there wasn't a single text that covered everything I needed to include in the course, but I was able to identify relevant sections from four different OER texts to attach to various subjects and modules we would cover. In my case, including OERs presented opportunities to reinforce skills and lessons that were directly relevant to the learning outcomes of my course. I'm going to discuss some of them here, and I encourage you to think about how introducing students to OERs might help you to enhance the learning process for your students. Wojcicki 2010 developed a program for educators in journalism, communication, English, and social studies classes to address online news literacy, but the learning outcomes are applicable to the competencies we want students to develop in many other contexts as well. Take a look at this list and consider how these skills might come into play in your courses, your disciplines, or in your everyday lives. In addition to things like knowing how to search and evaluate content effectively, You'll see here that the ability to access and use open education resource materials and courseware is noted specifically as an important learning outcome, as is the ability to use Creative Commons licenses for sharing and appropriating web resources. These information and media literacy skills will help our students navigate their own education and they will remain crucial to their professional development and personal well-being. A range of research supports this idea that incorporating OERs can encourage academic and civic engagement for students. In the context of a political science course, Califuse 2021 found that students who reported a low level of interest in American government interacted more with a free online text compared to a traditional commercial text. Other scholars have found that OERs can be an important part of helping students to develop their critical thinking skills by serving as resources for online discussions and by offering alternative ways of supporting students in distance learning contexts. Given that so many of our academic and civic engagement opportunities now exist online or through mediated channels, this is key. McClure and Sinkinson 2020 also noted that OERs may catalyze lessons about advocacy and empowerment. Their research indicated a desire on the part of students for voice and agency. They argued that, quote, allowing the students to take charge and use their voices to shape OER will ensure that it is actually meeting their needs and not falling short of student expectations. They also suggested, quote, empowering students to share the story and vision of OER through articles and media on campus to grow the conversation and awareness of existing and developing OER. This notion of encouraging students to share their voices and viewpoints is intrinsic to the idea of diversity and true dialogue. OERs can highlight these concepts because they allow instructors to address the need and value of representing a range of perspectives. After all, a single textbook might let students view a topic through the lens of a single author or editor, or perhaps a few contributors. In contrast, incorporating OERs can expose students to more points of view and more interpretations, explanations, and applications. In 2022, Lapham and colleagues argued that traditional textbooks often reinforce the norms of dominant cultural forces and socialize students into structures of white supremacy, patriarchy, gender binaries, heteronormativity, ableism, patriarchy, and colonialism. 
They said OERs can be symbols of social justice in their capacity to reflect diversity of knowledge, visual design, and perspectives. And because OERs as co-constructed resources may engage marginalized populations so that their experiences and voices can be included. In this vein, Conwer and colleagues 2010 noted the considerable challenges involved with developing and disseminating OER scholarship sustainably to, within, and from the global south, as content creation and usage is often limited by governmental and institutional hierarchies. But they also noted that reimagining these structures could allow various stakeholders to interact and collaborate in creating and using OERs, emphasizing learner-centered approaches and building toward more participatory and truly democratic cultures. These kinds of efforts to diversify scholarship, increase representation and participation, and enhance democracy also connect to issues of inclusivity and accessibility. Hawkins and colleagues, 2012, stated that OERs centered on learning to teach inclusively could enhance awareness of student diversity and help teachers transcend traditional pedagogical approaches that often fall short when it comes to addressing intercultural learning, resolving tensions, and tackling controversial topics sensitively. As Altenay and colleagues 2018 stated in their research on open education practices for learners with disabilities, Access, openness, and equal opportunities for learning, quote, confirm the essence of active dialogue, engaging learners and giving them transferable skills that they can use throughout their lives. Underscoring their point, Altenay and colleagues highlighted the development of OER course materials that were constructed with input from learners with disabilities and their families. The activities and exercises in the course supported social dynamism and engagement among learners with disabilities and their families to stimulate motivation for learning. This resonates with my own criticism of public discourse class in that we cover the rhetoric of the accessibility rights movement. But as a teacher, the research of Altenay and colleagues also rang true because of its applicability to my own students and their various accessibility needs. Furthermore, assistive technologies and e-learning systems, open access to teaching and learning, and accessibility and usability of the content also help other learners who may need to overcome time and location barriers, as well as those related to the affordability of a college education. Cardin 2023 noted a surge in the adoption of OERs during the COVID-19 pandemic, a time when the limitations of traditional education and barriers to access to educational resources became glaringly apparent. But, he said, the ongoing conversations about OERs have allowed us all to bring inclusivity, affordability, and accessibility to the forefront as we rethink our, quote, knowledge-sharing ecosystem. That vast ecosystem requires us to be aware of the potential usefulness of OERs as we try to connect individuals with one another in public communication settings that may simultaneously have local and global dimensions. Hawkins and colleagues 2012 stated, quote, whether at a distance or in the classroom, inclusive teachers focus on knowing the person and what they can bring to the learning situation in terms of their experiences and knowledge. This has huge implications for the design of activities and for the variety of tools and techniques we use in order that students can share their ideas and knowledge and engage in a deep and personal way. All of this points to how OERs may allow educators to recognize and utilize informal learning tools. As Al-Awidi and Al-Furai 2023 pointed out, Many teachers favor the use of social media and games, but further innovation could transform schools and workplaces if OER-centered applications and workshops could be implemented. Instructional innovations that utilize OERs could provide valuable opportunities for lessons about intellectual property. In my class, we talked about OERs in the context of source attribution. That was important for clarifying university policies related to academic integrity, as well as copyright laws, but it was also relevant to the course content on rhetoric as we learned about source credibility in terms of tests of evidence and the ethos of communicators. Baran and Al-Zubi 2020 also explained that students could learn several things through the process of creating OER content. These takeaways matter because our students are not simply consumers of information, but creators as well. 
Therefore, as several scholars have acknowledged, it is imperative that educators help students understand how knowledge is understood and constructed within and across disciplines and in society. This will only become more important as we grapple with generative AI and other challenges that are sure to impact education and public discourse. I've touched on a sample of relevant scholarship related to how we might improve public discourse through open education resources, but there is so much more to be learned and shared, and I look forward to interacting with you as you contemplate the content of this lightning talk. Thanks for your time and attention, and let's continue the conversation.